Welcome back to Gear Check Games. This is episode three of our Pokemon Gold for the Game Boy Pocket slash Game Boy Color. Uh, last time, slash we Super got Game lost. Boy. Oh yeah, yeah. You can play this on the Super Game Boy. Didn't it have a unique? Uh, oh, what do you call it? Color the palette borders. Well, that's well, yeah, just yeah, it did, it did have, <laughs> yeah, it did have unique borders as well, and that can be our little addendum to last episode's conversation. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've slept since then. I don't remember this. <laughs> uh, so, we got lost in Dark Cave last time, and we made it to... I'm pretty sure this is... This isn't Cherry Grove, it's Violet City? Because everything's purple? Yes, that is the one. Uh, you would think, uh, for someone who's played this for like 20 years, I would know the names. Man. But I constantly forget this and Olivine's name. Just because. <laughs> I was getting kind of thrown off back there, because I've uh, most recently played through uh, Johto on... Soul Silver, um, and in that version, they um, gave a pretty radical uh, glow up to a lot of these towns, and Violet oh, City yeah. in particular. Uh, you know, they they made the whole um, like traditional oh. like Japanese architecture theming a lot more overt in that version. I mean, it's pretty yeah. overt here, but like they really, really ramped it up to eleven. And on the way up to uh, Sprout Tower, there's a couple of nice little bridges and like some stonework. Oh. It's 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 so good. I, love, I do like that. I love the the visual. Most of the visual upgrades in uh, Heart Gold and Soul Silver are pretty awesome. Uh, one of my one of my favorite ones is Ecritique City. Uh, yeah, and we can talk more about it when we get there. Uh huh. But ev everything to do with the bell tower, uh, that whole like fall foliage. Oh yeah, uh, the road leading on, up to the, bell tower is gorgeous yeah. in that game. Plus that music track while you're playing up there is just mm, Shep's keys. Mm -hmm. That is that is peak Gen two for me. Yeah, but we, for, before we get to the bell tower, we gotta conquer the sprout tower. Oh yeah, which well, no, I mean, this sounds is the like bell a joke. Tower. The bell sprout tower. Yeah. Damn, this guy. <laughs> so um, again, to 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 bring up to annoyingly bring up heart gold and soul silver. Um, in that version, you're actually not able to challenge the violet gym until you complete the sprout tower. Oh yeah. Which I mean. Progression wise, like I think that's how I would prefer to do it, because like, you know, we'll get a few more levels in before you go up against the first boss, but like it is kind of annoying that it takes away that small choice. And there are a lot of little things like that in Heart Gold and Soul Silver that unfortunately kinda cause cause one of my favorite things about um the Generation 2 games and Generation 1, as I mentioned, oh. I think I mentioned it several times in the red playthrough, is, um... Look for this oh, guy. Hi, Ghastly. Um... Is the, the amount of freedom and choice you have and how you progress through the game in these older Pokemon games. And it's just, you know, you still have quite a bit of that in Heart Gold and Soul Silver, but, like, they change some little things, um... That... You know, kind of lean the, the game a little more towards, like, the then-contemporary Pokemon progression design. Which wasn't, like, as oppressively restrictive and linear and tutorial-laden as, like, the modern Again, games yeah. are, but, um... Yeah. You know. I, I would I would say Gen 2 is, a, like, at least the Johto portion is, is more linear than uh, Kanto in the original. Uh, but yeah. it still offers you a degree of choice. Like, there's several... Like two or three optional dungeons, you just straight up don't have to do. Uh huh. Um, and you can, there's a couple of gym leaders you can do out of order, um, just because you can access all three of them right after e critique. Oh boy, we're actually gonna give Charlotte a try. <laughs> oh yeah. From from this angle, the the face Poison on Charlotte's sting. butt looks like it's smiling. <laughs> yeah. You see, it's all about perspective, folks. <laughs> so, I'm trying to catch this ghastly, and that was one of the big reasons I started at night. Yeah. Um, Ooh, is Ghastly gonna be one of your boys? Oh, uh, yes and yes and no. He's not a permanent fixture. Uh, I wanted him because uh, my my brother told me a really cheesy way to defeat Whitney, and I'm all about that cheese. Oh no! Uh, he's like nice. Oh hey, you got him. <laughs> Damn. Uh, my 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 brother's strategy, and I know this is like. F super future planning because that's what you do when you've played these games a dozen times right uh, he, his easy way to kill her is, or not kill her just defeat her for all the kids out there <laughs> to turn her into a ghost yeah <laughs> to send her to the shadow realm yeah. I guess she didn't God have a it. ghost of a chance yeah hey. let's hope so Mo, Mo. I, I don't get it 
I don't. There's some names in this. Mo, Mo Gasly, Mo Problems. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, his strategy is he puts curse on her like immediately, uh, to put the pressure on her, so that way she'll just get caught in like a milk drink, um, cycle, so you can just slowly whittle her down. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I don't go for that strat. I think the most recent time I played through, um, like OG Gen Two, um. I used one of the trade Pokemon that you can pick up in this town, um, basically to just wall the crap out of her, oh, um, yeah. while also laying down a bunch of like sand attacks to lower her accuracy. Um, That's a good which is an extremely cheap and slow way to win, but uh, you know it's Whitney. <laughs> yeah, like of all the uh, gym leaders, yeah, speaking of the I devil, here know that, it is. Like, we're in the town with. Um, What's his name? Nice. Into the sink faucet. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye forever, Bell Sprout. You should have named oh, your yeah. Bell Sprout like Apollo Creed or Clubber Lang or something. I should have called it like Sacrifice or something. <laughs> My God. <laughs> we'll never see her. Hey man, again. I was just going for the the, the Rocky. Parallel. I didn't. I didn't mean any ill will towards this. Uh, this poor Bell Sprout. I do. I have. I have beef with all these Bell Sprouts. Have you ever used a Bell Sprout before? Poggers. Or a victory Bell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've never. I think I used a Victor Bell once as a uh, as a kid. Oh wow! But I've got a. I got a soft spot for Vile Plume. I forgot that that jingle was in this game. The trade jingle? Yeah. I guess I just always associate that with Gen 1, and... I don't know, I don't do a whole lot of trading in Gen 2. I did a lot of trading in Gen 2, uh, both with my brother and with uh, friends at school. Mm -hmm. did you get I like that they apparently have enough, like, snakish Pokemon to have a snake uh, over what my icon. Yeah, this is before we had... Um... The ability to show like different uh, Pokemon sprites in the menus in the overworld. <laughs> now you use protection when you trade it with randoms, right? You don't want to get Pokerus, right? Oh yeah. Pokerus, no, you do want to get Pokerus. Get you, you want to turn off your protection, Ethan. Turn off your anti Pokerus. <laughs> you want Poke? You know what? I'm not gonna make that joke. <laughs> yeah, I too could make jokes that are not appropriate <laughs> for our audience. <laughs> This is I, I mean, it is dark to. outside. It's gear shake games after dark. <laughs> I, mean, I, was, I was just talking about malware. I don't know what you guys are saying. Gear check games at night, spelled N I T N I T E. Yeah. <laughs> no, Dan, it's <laughs> PM. If you're, if you're watching this on a Friday late <laughs> at night, gear check games at PM. Yeah. Uh, so all these guys, like we said before, it's Bell Sprout Tower. So it's just Plenty like out. leagues of Bell Sprout. So if you choose Totodile, good luck. Yeah. Uh, it's like. Like, most of them are pretty weak, so you can just, like, use Rage or Scratch on them if you pick Totodile. But, like, they're they're gonna do significantly more damage uh, to you. Uh, so you will have to go back to the Pokemon Center once or twice. Mm -hmm. But if you got Cyndaquil, you're good to go here. Oh, yeah. I, I, I know we've probably said it before, uh, but I feel like the starters are kind of like an early game difficulty setting. Uh-huh. Once again. Uh, and, and, and it's completely reversed... In, in Gen 2 over Gen 1. Like in yeah, Gen I was going to say, in Gen 1, pick the water starter was the easier start. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and even more so with grass, because your second gym is uh, water, and then your third gym is um, lightning, so you kind of resist oh, yeah. it a little bit. Yeah. In this one, if you go for the grass oh, type, yeah. you, just, you, just, you just get kicked in the teeth repeatedly, because like, you go from flying type boss... To bug type boss, yeah. And yeah. Scyther's no joke. Like he's oh, yeah. not a pushover. He'll, he'll wreck you. Yeah, I'm pretty sure in Gen in the Gen Four remakes, uh, the um, don't the Kakuna and the Metapod have bug bite or something like that? Well, yeah, and the Scyther has U-turn. Oh god, it's. I mean, he's he's pretty deadly in this one too. I think that he has a uh, Swords Dance. God, we're talking about things way in the future. <laughs> yeah, we really are. It's it's Sprout Tower, man. Yeah. Yeah. Use fire attack on Bellsprout. <laughs> over and Collect over. Collect money. I, 
I guess I could have skipped like two or three of these guys because they're literally the same. Press yeah. X well, they're to mandatory sprout. encounter. <laughs> um, we are going to. The other reason to to do this is to get an HM at the very end. Yeah. Um, it's flash, it's right? Yeah. Okay. Which, if you want to get a, if you want to get Tyrogue late game, mm -hmm. uh, it's pretty much required because that dungeon is bullshit. Uh, I wish you could get Tyrogue sooner. I know. It's like they literally gate him until after you defeat uh, Claire. Yeah. So you're like, well, if I want like a really good fighting mon that I don't have to trade for, I gotta really go back and work for it. I know we've talked about this a lot off the record, but like. I really like the second generation of Pokemon games, but like one of my biggest issues with them is I don't think that in a lot of cases the new Pokemon are used very effectively. Yeah. Like starting with Gen 3, I think they did it a lot better where like the new Pokemon are like front and center, you know, right from square one of the game. You know, you go out to a new route and it's like, oh, like every Pokemon I'm encountering is new. You know, they're all basically XPs of old Pokemon, but like, you know, we've got new Pidgey, new Rattata, but like at least the yeah. designs are slightly different. Whereas in this one, it almost seems the, like, like they... The new logo from the new Super Mario Bros and the new <laughs> 3DS and all that. <laughs> new Pokemon. New Pidgey. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. And it's evolution. New Pidgey XL. Why is going the sound? Oh, I don't know. I, I I think maybe sounds uh, of the ocean. I think maybe there was like a YouTube video because I, I recorded desktop audio. That's why it's in stereo. Uh huh. So so sometimes just like random shit will pop up. And I'm like I don't I don't know what that is. It's never a dull day when I could record a playthrough. Yeah, none of this was happening until you caught that ghastly. Oh no. <laughs> True. We have trouble with ghosts in these playthroughs. First the, first the Farfetch disaster, now Ghastly. <laughs> oh no, he said the F word, Farfetch. <laughs> the Pokemon we swore to never speak of again. GCG after dark, baby. <laughs> he was supposed to... <laughs> he was supposed to be buried in the backyard. <laughs> so I, what I, was, it, I keep uh, reading it as Flamo, not Flamio. Flamo. Flamo. It's like Flamon from... Uh, um, what is it? The Fantastic Four? Oh, I oh, thought you were going to say Digimon. I was like, really? I was going to say Flame Mon. Mon. Remember, remember the Flame Fantastic Man. Four cartoon in the 90s where the uh, Human Torch had that rap song? Look it up, kids. Remember Fans Four Stick? Yeah, it's like a rap. <laughs> Look it up. <laughs> I'll have to do that after this. That sounds amazing. The 90s? It's, it's something. Oh, God. Do you guys remember the really short-lived... Um, Iron Man cartoon of the 90s? Yes. I actually do. I've watched a few episodes. Wasn't there it's like, like a... a... Sorry, go ahead. Well, it was incredibly cheesy, and pretty much like every episode he had like a new suit. It was like purely <laughs> for... purely a toy commercial. Yeah. This is before we got a mainstream acceptable uh, MCU Iron Man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, what Toy I was gonna stick. say is... Um, any of you guys ever hear about that um, Fantastic Four movie that was like it was made on like a shoestring budget, I think, but it was like a oh, yeah. like one of the big studios. Like they got it done and just like never released it. Mm -hmm. But I, th I think it was either in like the late '80s or sometime in the '90s yeah, that it was I've, in production. But yeah, like it it it, it has been like uh -oh. uh, unofficially released, <gasps> but he's growing wings. He's turning Spread into Spread your wings and fly, tricks. Flamio. Oh, wow. Quilava's mean looking in this game. Yeah. I, I like how he starts off as, like, the cutest, meekest little... little Achinda, and then when he grows up, he just gets angry and Now he's, 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 he's ready for blood. Yeah. Isn't his signature move... I know, like, Quilava will eventually learn um, Flame Wheel. Isn't it uh, later on in other games, it's like Eruption... It got twice as big. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think his his signature move nowadays is basically eruption. I don't know if he was the f I don't think he was the first Pokemon <laughs> to learn it, but <laughs> Oh yeah. What is this? <laughs> it's it's what Flamio's sprite looks like. You know what it is. <laughs> it's it's red Sonic. Un unlike knock, Sonic, knock, you it's don't Flamio. <laughs> you know your rival kinda looks like Knuckles from behind. 
fruit. Oh, yeah, he does. I'm back to oh, kick yeah, some is, bud in this... Sprout Tower. <laughs> this is another great, um, another great moment in the manga that's completely backwards from from how it is in the uh, um, the game. Because like when Gold gets up here, Gold's the one who breaks in <laughs> because they refuse him entry because they're like, hey, you have to put on this gi and you have to train with us. And he's like, well, no, I'm trying, I'm chasing this crook down. <laughs> so he gets like a grappling hook and climbs the tower. Oh my god. So so like is Silver he, like the law abiding room. citizen? He's like, yeah. yeah, I'll wear the, the kimono. Or the gi, sorry. <laughs> so like when he gets up there, the uh this monk guy, I don't remember his name, is it Nico or Sage Chow or whatever his name is? He's actually, like, congratulating him. He's like, wow, you're a really strong trainer. Please continue treating your Pokemon with kindness, because it say, sounds like you have a lot of love in your heart. And Gold's like, this guy? <laughs> you're kidding me. I thought you were saying he says this to Gold, but then he's like, but you didn't enter, enter the tower legitimately, so see you later. And then he just cuts the rope. Count. You didn't say ninja. <laughs> he just throws him out like Fresh Prince of Bella. <laughs> oh my god. I mean, ah! <laughs> I'm pretty sure he does fall off the tower at one point. Oh my or god. One of the towers collapses on him, I don't remember which. <laughs> Jeez. Dude, the Pokemon manga is wild. Yeah. I implore everyone to read it. So I hear. Uh, but here's... Uh, man, I missed his name. This guy This guy switches it up, he's like, hey, I got a Bellsprout, but also a Hoot Hoot. Whoa, we're daring. He kind of looks like... Oh, right, yeah. Did, in our playthrough, didn't we call him Brown Sprout because he looks like a. He kind of looks like a Bell Sprout, no. but not quite. No, he doesn't look anything <laughs> like a Bell Sprout, Dan. We called him Brown Sprout because he's the only Pokemon in this tower owned by a trainer that is not a Bell Sprout. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I thought you I were think, going I think, for like a potato vibe. I think, I think the head cannon was like. You know, he was like. Ra he like grew up around Bell Sprouts and he like. Thinks he's one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Forgot about Poor that. Hoot Hoot. That's that would actually be adorable. Yeah. He doesn't know the he the little Hoot Hoot that could. <laughs> all, he sees all of his friends turning into weeping bells, and he's like, "One day I'll flip over too." <laughs> this is literally the plot of Elf. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> imagine. You know what? I don't want to imagine so it, Will Ferrell in a Hoot Hoot sprout. costume. <laughs> sprout, yeah. Sage Chow, I know him. And then Hoot Hoot goes to New York City to help, to learn how to live with the other owls. <laughs> who who played uh, Will Ferrell's dad in that movie? I forget. Congratulations, world's best rage candy bar. <laughs> Damn, I thought that was Gangbusters. <laughs> Hoot Hoot who tackles every uh, every Christmas tree he can. <laughs> We can't control this owl. Oh my god. Uh, so now that... And we've officially de tower. depleted the well of, um... Ill-fitting elf references <laughs> for the night. Uh, now we have to go take on Falkner. Yeah, speaking of birds. Hey, it's daytime. Yeah. Oh yeah! No, it's morn, Ethan. <laughs> Actually, I'm, I'm pretty sure this color palette begins at, like, 4 a.m., so, um... That's interesting. <laughs> Uh, this was this is what I was gonna mention last time is m Morn as it's so called in the game is my favorite color palette to play. play oh in. yeah, it's a good one. It, it's so bright and cheery. Probably the one I'm the least used to seeing just because of um, you know the the times I tend to be awake when I've been playing these games. <laughs> yeah, that's that's kind of how it's been um, on my side playthrough too. So I'm playing it on my 3ds. Mm -hmm. So like I'll play it for like an hour before bed. So I'm like, oh man, it's all always night. I can't I, if I'm gonna evolve my Eevee, it's like umber on her bust. Yeah. So like today I was home, homesick. So I was playing it on the couch. And I was like, well, what? It's daytime? <gasps> the possibilities are endless. <laughs> Trey, the keyword is guts. Do you have it? Guts. Oh, this is where I played the forces from the uh, Berserk soundtrack. Oh shit, Pidgey! <laughs> so, the guy before him, the first trainer in here, is actually, he's been a quote-unquote a gear check for me before. 
Like, ah, if you, there it is. You said it. You said, you said the name of the channel. Uh. He wins the game. All uh, right, join us next time for our next Pokemon series. That's the end of this one. I'm no longer charmed and imp or impressed by this gag. <laughs> Get ready for it's our the, next no adventure. It's folks. sure I'm, to be a sapphire hit. Oh, boy. <laughs> Assuming we don't play Ruby. I can hardly kinda, wait. Kinda Charlotte, do you think I are you gonna Are you gonna snipe me when I try to record that one too, Trey? Mm, actually, the Swerve, the next Pokemon open. game we're playing is Pokemon Pinball. Fun fact, um, originally when we were scheduling, um, I was the one who was gonna record Gen 2. But as I do with most things, I was overthinking it and having a hard time uh, getting anything off the ground, so... At a certain point, Trey was like, Hey, I kind of feel like playing Gen 2 again. Do you care if I record? I was like, yeah, sure, whatever. <laughs> like, it was kind of on a whim, too, wasn't it? I was just like, yeah. hey, I'm going to do this. Uh-huh. Because I was like, I was actually in the process of making, like, like sidebar <laughs> art and stuff, and, like... <laughs> you were you were trying to figure out the Well, best there team. he is. The illegal yeah, Pidgeotto. Oh, yeah. Oh god. Yeah, get ready. Get ready. This is going to be a recurring theme among the boss characters in this game is um Pokémon that probably should not have evolved yet given their their levels. He's just an early bloomer. Yeah, he's yeah. the early bird. And now he's <laughs> dead. <laughs> Yo, the early bird. God. So normally that Pidgeotto gives me trouble, but since we're like level 15, well now level 16, he gives us no trouble at all. <laughs> Yeah, he, the um... Darn! <laughs> so that was our yeah, first so gym fun. leader, guys. Hope you hope you enjoyed it while it lasted, because it did not last fresh. long. Uh, I'm, I'm a little a little sad that they didn't give him uh, his cannon signature mon. Uh, in, in the... Or, as I call it, his cannon mon. Uh, at the very beginning of the manga, when uh, Gold first meets Faulkner, uh, he's practicing some aerial movements out in a field. And a wild Skarmory comes by, so oh, Gold helps wow. him capture it. Well, um, Trey, I'm kind of relieved that they didn't give him a Skarmory. If he's gonna be the first, like, Skarmory is like, to this day, like an OU tier wall Pokemon. Yeah, he's great. Yeah, Skarmory's a beast. I'm like, very he, glad they did not give Faulkner a Skarmory, Jesus Christ. Like, if you pick Chikorita, like, say your prayers if he had that. Oh my god. Well, hell, even I don't think even Cyndaquil could take that thing on at this stage. Yeah, with that how, that, that level of like, defense. Well, I guess yeah. his special defense isn't as good, but still, he's yeah. still pretty beefy. It'd be so funny if they gave him like level one spikes too. Oh <laughs> god, that would just be evil. <laughs> I don't know Did why we're like away? fantasizing about this, you know, given the fact that Game Freak is the one making these games. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, I don't know if I get it now, or if I forget, but this this professor's aide has Togepi's egg. Yeah. Uh, and the game will not let you progress until you pick up the egg. Well, unfortunately, since it's Gen 2, we probably, I'm guessing we're not going to be using Togepi. <laughs> no. Because in HeartGold and SoulSilver, at least you can turn it into Togekiss, which is actually a pretty good and useful Pokemon. Yeah. Then they have, like, a very unique moveset. Yeah, he gets, like, Aura like, Sphere. Um, well, I mean, he's a normal type with, like, a high special uh, stat. I think you could light him up with, like, your... Well, there goes Onyx. Yeah, bye, Onyx. I, I have other plans in mind for this team. You will see. Received egg. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't, did I mention what Togepi's like? Well, maybe I'll mention... Mention it when uh, when he finally hatches, because Togepi in the manga is so good. <laughs> he is amazing. I'm guessing they probably did more with it than they did with um, Misty's Togepi in the anime. Oh yeah, he's got like he's not in the manga very long, because Gold's like I can't like I can't train this. He's he's a babby. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but his his few moments are great. Uh, maybe we'll use some Togepi images for the uh, uh, thumbnails. Oh, maybe. In this uh, episode that had nothing to do with Togepi, good idea. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, next episode, we gotta go south. Uh, join us then. Bye.